I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. In this Inkscape tutorial, I wanna take a closer look at the spray can tool because I think we can use it to create custom brushes as we do a study of a tree in this case. I'll show you how to actually create the brushes, how the tool works, and specifically with the cloning feature, you can then change the colors in real time to make different versions of the tree. So this all stemmed from, I was working on a landscape piece with fall foliage, and I realized this would be a key video to include first before we all do a bigger landscape together. Now I know my voice is garbage right now, but I feel a lot better than I sound, so just bear with me. Let's start with the basics and do a quick refresher. The spray can tool is right here in the toolbar, and basically what it does is it shoots out any object you have selected. So if I choose this teal triangle, and I'm on spray can tool, I have three choices. Under mode on the top, I can spray objects as copies, I can spray objects as clones, or you can spray objects in a single path. And I love Spray Can Tool because of the capabilities it gives. In this case, for this tutorial, we're gonna use it like a paintbrush. And it's gonna paint based on the settings we have up here. So we have a lot of control over the tool. For width, that's basically the spray area versus the canvas size. Amount is the amount of the objects that get shot out every time you hold the mouse button down. Rotation will be key for this project. It just turns it a little bit for each spray. Scale changes the size of the object as you spray it. Scatter spreads it out more and focus has to do with the ring radius you see here, this orange ring. For now, I've got width five, amount 20, everything else is zero except for scatter. The lowest you can go is one. I know this teal triangle is selected because of the bounding box around it. I'll hold down the mouse button and spray paint some triangles. That is the first mode, spray copies. Change to the second mode, spray clones. I'll select this gray square, make sure I'm back on the spray can mode and I'll spray out the squares. So no big difference yet. Third mode, which is gonna be this one over here. I'll do single path, go to spray pan tool, single path, this is third one. I'll spray it out. So what is the difference? They all look like we did the same thing, right? Kind of. If copies is the baseline, it just shoots out individual things. You can click on every single one separately. Single path means this whole thing is one piece, which is very useful if you're trying to spray a group of things you want to control is one, and clones is the key. This is what makes this exercise with the tree going to be a little bit, um, what's the word? We'll just say useful. With spray clones, all of the new squares are separate, but they're controlled by the original. So if I change the size in the original, they all change. If you change the color on the original, they all change. And you can change it in real time, which is useful when you're doing creative work. All right, enough theory, let's put it into practice. So I've got here, I cheated a little bit. I brought a color palette in, and a friend of mine told me, if you wanna play along, you can screen capture this right here, or I'll have the exact color palette down in the description below. And we're gonna make each of these objects, which will become our custom brushes. I did base them on the way painters have very specific brushes for very specific things that they wanna do. And the spray can tool lets this become our palette that we can customize any way that we want. Let's make a tree. I'm gonna timestamp this right here so in future tutorials we can reference this video and you can make a basic tree if we're doing a larger landscape. We'll start by blocking it in. So this brush right here, I'll take the Bezier pen tool and draw out this odd shape, almost like a bent oval. It's the wrong color, so I'll do the eyedropper. I'll choose this green we're going with. I'm gonna change the opacity down to somewhere in the middle, around 50%, because this way when I spray it out, when it layers, it'll add more values. All right, let's scale it down. Just holding shift and control, which keeps it consistent. Put it up here and we'll click on spray tool. I did change the settings. The settings for this activity are gonna be five for the width, 30 for the amount, five for rotation, because when we use the brush to spray on the leaves, I want it to move a bit. Scale, 50, scatter, 20, focus, 10. All right, so it's selected. Let's block in our tree. Okay, it doesn't look like much yet, but it gives us something to hang the leaves onto. So let's go on to this next brush. Same thing, I'll take the Bezier pen tool. This time I'm gonna make almost like an upside down V. Let's scale it down a little tiny bit. 
I could use a spray can tool to spray this into the shape of the brush I want, almost like a spray brush to make a spray brush. But instead, I'll show you another trick. If you click on the object and start to move it around, every time you push the space bar, it's gonna stamp one out. So I'll push the space bar, it leaves one behind, and I'll add another one down here, push the space bar again. You could also do Control D and just keep moving around, but it'll make more sense when I make a smaller version. And rather than just spray it randomly, now I'll do my space bar specific stamping out where I want it. I notice it keeps trying to snap onto a similar size. Up here is snapping this magnet with electricity. I'm gonna turn the snapping off for now. Grab my little leaf and stamp out some more. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just making a custom brush here. I'm gonna grab a no man's land, make a bounding box around everything. I'm gonna do path union. So now all that becomes one thing. And then just out of habit, when you're doing a lot of this type of spraying out, you're gonna get a lot of nodes. Every time you spray something, it's creating nodes. All that stuff right there. So just out of habit, I'm gonna to go to path simplify. So it barely changed it. It warped it a little bit, but that just reduced the amount of nodes. And that'll make a difference the bigger and more complex your project gets, especially when Inkscape has a tendency to crash sometimes. But I like this as my brush here. Let's bring it, scale it down. I believe it's actually a different color. We'll go with the second green here. And I'll change the opacity down to maybe 75 around there. Let's put it onto our palette. To speed things up, the rest of the brushes were made the same way. This one is just a smushed version of that. So I'm gonna just totally cheat and take this one here. It's already pre-colored. To show you what this one actually is, I'll Control D, duplicate it. I just made a series of circles. Same with that one. And if you notice, this one is the exact same as that. It's just that I made it smaller on an angle. So again, let's just cheat and speed things up and use the preset brushes, but now you know how to make your own, any style that you want. You see, I just wanna to get to the fun part. Let's first move our blocking a little bit down so we have some more space. I'm gonna choose my leaves that we made together here, spray can, and let's spray on our leaves, just holding the mouse button down. This gives us a baseline of the shape of what our tree's gonna look like. Okay, let's go to the next brush, which is a squished version. Still around 60% on the opacity. Go to spray can, add some more coloring. On to the next brush, I'll choose the dot pattern here. This one will be full opacity because I wanna add some weight. Choose the other dot pattern. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna use the pencil tool to make the tree trunk and the tool itself has some quirks to it. You can customize it so it's always the way you want it. I'm gonna assume that you're using the default, or at least I'm using the default, so let's go with that. It's going to adopt the last style used, so I like to grab just a rectangle and even see what the style is. We have no stroke. I'll add a stroke on that, and the fill I'll take away. So now I'll choose pencil, and there it goes. Okay, let's put a tree trunk in here. The pencil settings I have are pretty basic. I'm on the first mode, which is create regular Bezier path. And smoothing is five. If you increase the smoothing quite a bit, you don't get some of the natural variations, which I do want. So I have it low on five. And the most important setting is shape triangle in. So when I draw, it looks like it starts with a triangle and it fades out to a thin point, which is good for branches. Now let's cover those branches. I just want to have them peeking just so slightly underneath the leaves. Go back to this first one. Try our second again. Let's go on to the highlights here. So I made these little ones much lighter. This is meant to add some more shape to the bunches of leaves, like the sun's kind of hitting. Finally, I'll go to the dark version to further define some of the shape. If you spray it out and it looks like it's just too sharp, you can change the blur. So down here on blur, we'll add a little bit of blur. And that's why we want the clone. So you can add lots of blur and it just looks like ink drops. Just do a little blur. Coming together a little bit, I'm gonna add some more shadow here with the Bezier pen. Just marking in like an odd shape where there'd be some more darkness in the tree. 
Let's go to full black, no stroke. Let's definitely blur that. And sometimes I like to make another Bezier pen shape that covers only half the tree and blur that. I scribbled a random shadow down there just for kicks. Might as well add some more strokes to the tree trunk too. And why not add some grass or weeds? Okay, there's my ode to a tree. Let's get this stuff out of the way. I'm gonna show you one more trick, which was the inspiration for this whole video here. First, I'm gonna duplicate this whole thing. So I grab all of it together, control D. Hopefully it won't crash Inkscape and I'll slide it over. So we have two, but remember the key. We used clones. We used the cloning feature of the spray can tool and watch what that lets us do now. Now I know you can filter it and go to Photoshop or any other tool and change colors on the fly, but this is a tool that does come in handy when you're actually actively creating something. Plus it illustrates pretty clearly the benefits of using the clone mode. Right now, if I change any original brushes, it'll change both of these trees. So let's grab the original tree, group it together, control G, then go to path, object to path. That sets it the way it is, so it becomes its own entity here. All right, let's start with the blocking. I'll choose the blocking original clone and we'll just turn the dial into the red. And you see it goes into red, no big deal. Let's choose the next leaf, turn that. It starts to become fall and you can play with it in real time back and forth. Right about there is good. I'll, try, I'll just turn everything like almost like a 90 degree turn. Then I cheated and used these brushes up here. Let's turn that. You see where we're going with this? I'm not gonna mess around with the darks. Choose this one. And we're going, let's change the inner circle too. See that? You can try other colors too. Let's go to the other side of the spectrum here. Let's go to the blue orange. Try that, just flipping it around. And you've got some type of alien tree. It looks like I missed a brush in there somewhere. Maybe I didn't clone something, but you get the basic idea. We will come back to this. I wanna do more landscape work. If you'd like to see something, or if you have a question on this tutorial or any other tutorials we've done before, just let me know in the comments below and have fun with it. Thanks.